In-house today, we've got a couple new mouse pads from the guys over at X-Ray Pad. Now, these are like a really fast, tight cloth woven surface. Not really like anything I've ever seen before. And the prices are pretty competitive. The shipping kind of plays a variable in there. So we're going to get into it and break it all down. You ready? Let's go. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're checking out the two new Thor mouse pads from X-Ray Pad. For transparency, these were sent out by the guys at X-Ray Pad, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. So the Thor pad comes in two sizes, XL, which is 450 by 400 millimeter, and the extended at 900 by 400. Both have a thickness of three millimeter and have stitching on the edges. On the hardness scale, I'd put these somewhere between soft and medium. They have a little more give than a Zowie GSR and a little less than an artisan medium. We have the black versions in house today, but they also have a white colorway that is practically a spot on match for the white G Wolf mice. Regardless of which you go with, sizing is really generous here, so you have plenty of real estate regardless of play style. At first glance, the pricing here seems pretty competitive, but these guys aren't based in the US, so that shipping can potentially play a huge factor in the overall cost. The XL pad runs $16.50 US. Shipping then comes in two flavors, Airmail Post, which is around six bucks, but can take between two to four weeks to receive, or Express, which arrives in three to seven days, but runs around 17 bucks, doubling the price of the pad. The extended version is $29.50. Shipping options on this one are around seven bucks for the long wait or almost $19 for the Express. So maximum cost on this could be around 48 bucks. I will put a code for 15% off down in the description. I normally like to say pricing and value stuff for the end of the review, but I kind of want you to have these numbers in the front of your mind as we go through some of the comparison stuff. So the back here is rubber. These rolled out really nice, no waves. I don't have any issues with them sliding around on my desk either. And a big thing I noticed here was that there was no gross industrial rubber like chemical smell none as for the surface itself i honestly think you'd be hard pressed to find a faster cloth surface out there it's faster than the glorious pads it's faster than a gsr se it's faster than the razor goliath is it's way faster than a qck and it's faster than anything i've tried from cooler master it does have a bit of a grain to the weave so the lateral or sideways motion feels smoother than the vertical motion the fibers feel like lycra or spandex or something similar teflon and ptfe feet glide super smooth here so hyperglides will work great here as well thing is for all this speed you will sacrifice some control and I feel like that's one of the major reasons why somebody would choose a cloth surface over a hard surface. This thing plays faster and has less stopping power than my Amp 500. Walk with me here. Let's say you're using palm or claw grip and you're at 400 or 800 DPI and you're taking really large swipes. You're gonna have a hard time stopping this thing and your arm aiming is gonna have to be really dialed in because with all that speed, chances are you're gonna have to correct using your arm or your wrist, depending on the size of your mouse. But, and this is why I've been so focused on fingertip grip. So if I'm holding my mouse like this, my stopping power isn't coming from the surface or my elbow or even my wrist. The tension is created from opposing force from my fingers on either side of the mouse. So all your micro corrections occur right in here. You've heard me talk about the pocket right here that allows for vertical correction. Fingertip grip takes this a step further and allows you to do this in any direction every direction, supplementing the movement with your wrist. Now you can do this at 400 DPI, use more arm and have more control, or you can work at 800 DPI and use more wrist and you'll have to focus a little bit more on the fingertip correction, which in my opinion is worth it. But the last thing you want for this play style is resistance and that's where this mouse pad wins for me. So then the next obvious question would be, with this play style, what's the real world difference between using this pad and using a hard surface like the Glorious Helios? And I think the answer comes more down to preference than it does performance. If a cloth pad bothers your arm, if the stitching bothers your arm, if you live in an area with wildly varying climate, consistency may be an issue. It's unrealistic for me to be able to test this aspect of this pad in terms of consistency, but it's not waterproof or resistant or anything like that. Cloth pads in use are also quieter than a hard surface. Alternately, if you get sweaty and the underside of your arm drags or sticks to that hard surface, that's the worst. They also have a reputation for tearing up mouse feet faster, but I think a lot of that depends on your play style, and they are absolutely louder in use without a doubt. In real world, I'd be lying if I told you I play better with the Thor than with the Helios. Based on my play style, they play really similar for me, so it comes down to preference. I can tell you they both play better for me than the Amp 500 and the GSR SE. For reference, I'm currently maining the Endgame XM1 at 800 DPI. The big advantage that the Thor has, though, is size. I do love a full desk mat, and this one's got a good footprint. It's not quite as deep as the Glorious XXL, not even in the same ballpark as the XXL, but it's got that good depth that you don't get with extended pads from the likes of Razer or SteelSeries. 
So value, the shipping really hurts this thing, even with the discount. You may know X-Ray Pad is being a distributor for G-Wolves mice. So the move here is to add this on if you're already buying a mouse because you only get knocked for like five extra bucks on the shipping. And if you buy a G-Wolves mouse, you can bundle the extendo version for like an additional 19 bucks. That brings the total cost to 104 for both for the fast shipping or like 91 bucks for the slow shipping. The discount code does not work on the bundle though. I wanna to stress too that I don't have any kind of arrangement with X-Ray Pad. I don't get anything for you guys using that code. I'm just trying to get you that good info. It's really tough to quantify the value when you figure in shipping and wait time and what size pad you prefer and your play style. So I'm just gonna do it like this. I like it more than a glorious desk pad because my micro corrections require less effort and the surface is easier on the underside of my arm. I like it slightly better than the GSRSE for those exact same reasons, but to a lesser extent, this new blue colorway is fire too. I like it more than the Amp 500 because now that pad just feels a little slow after spending time with the Thor. And I do like it slightly better than the Helios only because it's available in a desk pad size. I'm not a huge fan of stitched edges even though they're done well here and they'll likely increase long-term durability. This is also less of an issue since I'm not doing large arm swipes anymore. And this logo looks pretty jank, if we're being honest. Quality-wise, I really hope this thing holds up long-term because I really can't argue with the performance. It fits perfect for the play style that I'm using right now. If you're playing with a similar style, I think you'd really like this pad. If you're a palm grip, big arm aimer, I'd probably go with something that had a little more control. Oh, and just because people ask this in every video, the desk mat you see in a lot of the footage is a Godspeed pad from Novel Keys. That particular print is pretty tough to get now. They're thick and squishy and pretty slow. I don't really like playing on them, but they look amazing on camera, which is why you see them all the time. When I'm not filming a video, they're generally stowed in their bag on a shelf. Links in the description for everything we talked about today. As always, any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button, and until next time, stay up.